Let's talk about the number one, number one intermittent fasting mistake that too many women are making that is actually causing them to gain weight. We don't want this. Fasting is a miracle and it's a miracle for the female body, but you gotta know this mistake. Please stick with me here because this is too important. So let's dive in. So fasting, you know, hopefully you all know I love it. I mean, I wrote lots of books. I've done tons of videos on it. Um, but what I love about it is it's, it's, it's one of those health tools that when you learn to master it, it is so empowering. You, only you can help yourself when you fast. You're the one that has to stop eating. So when you start to learn to metabolically switch and go in these periods of time where you are not eating and, and you see the result in your body, only you get credit for that, which is amazing. So now in Fast Like a Girl, I mapped out six different length fasts that I highly recommend women uh, lean into. So I put those six different length fasts in there because that's what research, after a decade of diving into the research for hours, those were the six that I saw. But it was more than that. I also took those six and I applied them here to our YouTube community, to my Resetter Collaborative on Facebook, and we tested them out. And I started to see patterns in people, especially women. And here is what I started to see that women were not doing enough of and why I wanted those six different length fasts in Fast Like a Girl. Women were not varying their fasts enough. So when Jason Fung, by the way, who gets a tremendous amount of credit in his book, The Obesity Code, when he brought that to the world and the world just started to see, whoa, weight loss isn't calorie in, calorie out anymore, and we need to start fasting, there was this trend of what I call o matters that got formed. This is one meal a day, people, where they would leave these long periods of fasting and then they would just eat one meal. Usually it was dinner. And they lost so much weight in the beginning. And then they plateaued. And here on my YouTube channel, I was teaching all the different emerging science on these different length fasts. And one of the things I found in my research was this concept called thrift, the thrifty gene hypothesis. And the thrifty gene hypothesis says that if we go back to those primal days, to our caveman and woman days, we didn't have consistent access to food. So we had to rely on going into our genetics and going into longer periods without food. And the people that actually had the gene that allowed them to go long periods without food were the ones that survived that time. And if they didn't have that gene, they died. And their thrifty gene hypothesis is that they believe that the majority of humans right now have this gene. And if we are not leaving these long periods of time without food, we're doing the opposite thing that happened in the caveman days, that we are killing ourselves by eating too much. But in the, if you dive into the research on the thrifty gene hypothesis, which by the way, there are two studies, I will leave them linked in the notes for the science hounds here. But if you dive into that hypothesis, what you will see is that it was variation of the length of fasts that our genes were set up to do. So when we tie all that together and we come back to this idea of like, what's the number one uh, fasting mistake that women are making, it's the same fast over and over and over again. It's what happened to the people that did the obesity code. It's what happened to the women who lost their cycle. It's what happened to the women that started gaining weight with fasting. You were not meant to be fasting the same way all the time. Now, I realize that, that is, that's not a belief that everybody buys into, but based off the science that I see, based off the millions of people that my platform has helped create this fasting lifestyle, and based off of my own personal experience, along with the experience of my patients, that variation, diet, fasting variation is the key that so many women are missing. Now, why would it be women, more women than men? 
So this dives into a lot of principles that I've taught in Fast Like a Girl. There is one hormone that's an outliner, outlier when it comes to food and fasting, and that is progesterone. Progesterone does not want you to fast. So the other piece of this equation is that when women are, are fasting all the time, they're not minding progesterone. And progesterone wants cortisol to be low and glucose to be high. Fasting will gently, temporarily raise cortisol just like uh, exercise will, and it brings glucose down. Those are both the equations that progesterone doesn't like. So if you're a cycling woman, all of a sudden the brain gets this idea like, wait, we don't have a lot of progesterone. There's a lot of cortisol. We're in a stressed state. Hold on to weight. There's no need to lose weight right now. So for the cycling woman, that's what's going on. For the menopausal woman, what's happening is the anxiety goes up and then that perpetuates the fear part of the brain. And all of a sudden the amygdala is triggered, cortisol is going up. And all of a sudden that you've got a, a menopausal woman under an incredibly stressed state. Okay, I got to interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called A Beginner's Guide to a Fasting Lifestyle. And all you've got to do is click here and you can jump right in. And what typically happens is she'll double down on all her diet routines and fast a little longer, only raising cortisol more. So the general theme of this video is women, variation, variation, variation. You need fasting variation. You may not be somebody who's going to go into a 72-hour fast, but maybe you're doing 13 hours every single day. I'm going to ask you to do 13 someday, 17 the next day, no fasting another day. Vary it. In Fast Like a Girl, I, I walk you through several variations of what I like. I gave you weekly variations. I gave you monthly variations. I got another book coming out that we're going to go down all the, the avenue of food. I give you variations in there. So when we come back to this idea of what did our primal body need, it needed variation. When we come back to what do our hormones need, women, progesterone needs something massively different than estrogen. So we've got to get out of that, that everyday routine with food and fasting, and we've got to, sh to, to, to break it up. And the last thing I want to say on this, and this is really an interesting lens in which to look at this through, think about your gym. We know this for the gym. Like if we go and work out, would you go and do the same workout every single day? If you, if you are doing it, you probably hit a plateau with your results. It's the same thing with fasting. You do the same thing every single day, works in the beginning, stops working. So let's vary it up. So let me know your favorite variation in the comments. I love reading your comments. So let me know. And then because of the weight loss video, what I want to know is how much weight have you lost learning to fast like a girl? I want to know because it's so fun when we see the massive amounts of weight and especially in my postmenopausal friends. Wow. Like when I see a 70-year-old drop 30 pounds in a couple of months, I, that's my dopamine for the week. So really excited for you all. And as always, I hope that helps. Okay, are you fasting and you're still not losing weight? Check out this video because you might be missing a key part of your fasting experience that's going to unlock weight loss. So if you think about it, all the humans that emerged out of that time have the gene that allows us to go without food. And that gene, they believe, is in all of us today.